Okay, we're continuing on with a couple more examples. I've got three more examples here. Um, create a VBA sub that will square cell 2 2 of a current selection. So when you read that, you should think selection.cells 2 comma 2 and place it in cell A1. I'm going to import that as a variable x. Then we're going to say y equals x squared and then we're going to place y into cell A1. First step is to dim our two variables, x and y in my case. You could use a and b or whatever you want. Then we obtain x as selection.cells2, 2, 2. In order for this to work, I need to have a selection though. We then square x to define our variable y. And actually, the goal is to place the result in cell A1. So I'm just going to shift this down so we're not covering up A1. And finally, we now take y and we put it into range A1. And we can run this using F5 and we take the 2, 2 position of the selection, which is 5. We square it and place it into cell A1. Example 4, create a VBA sub that will display the rows and columns of a selection and display in a message box. So the first step is to dim two variables as integers, the number of rows and the number of columns. Then we count the number of rows and the number of columns of our selection. And I need to make sure that I have a selection. And then we output that in a message box. Your selection has space, NR, number of rows, space rows, and space, in quotation, and number of columns, columns. So when I run this, now I'll do line by line. We count the number of rows, four, count the number of columns, three, and then we output that in a nice message box. Your selection has four rows and three columns. Finally, example five, create a VBA sub that asks the user for a number with an input box, then adds that number to the current active cell and places the result in a cell that is two cells right and two cells down from the current active cell. So I'm gonna obtain the input box number that's gonna be X. The number in the current active cell is gonna be Y. Then I'm gonna create a third variable Z that's gonna add X and Y and that's gonna be placed into an offset of the current active cell, two cells right and two cells down. So uh, two rows down, two columns over. The first step is to dim X, Y, and Z. The next step is to obtain X using an input box. Y will just be obtained from the active cell and I'm gonna just change this up a little, put a six here as the active cell. Z is just X plus Y. And finally we say the active cell offset two comma two, so two rows down, two columns over, that should be D eight, will be equal to Z. So let's go ahead and make sure that this works. I'm going to uh, step through this. Let's add a number 7 so that it obtained x as 7. We run the next line. That's the active cell value. y is 6. And then we create z, which is the just the sum of those two. And finally, we put that into the active cell offset, two rows and two columns. Now, some of you might be wondering, uh, you can consolidate this into just, you could remove these two lines of code. Um, and in fact, you can do that. So let me remove Y and Z from being dimmed, and I can just consolidate this active cell. Instead of Z, I can say active cell plus X, all right? And I can delete these, and now I only have, I have a couple rows fewer. And this works exactly the same. I can add uh, eight plus six into cell the active cell offset there. However, while you're learning VBA, I would advise against doing this. It's better to have more variables because down in the locals window, you can see more of what's going on. So while you're learning VBA, the more variables is fine. Uh, more lines of code is just fine. And then maybe later on when you get more comfortable, you can start consolidating lines of code. All right, uh, that's it for this second set of examples. Thanks for watching.